Let's take a look at upside and downside variability. The efficient market hypothesis says the distribution of future prices for any asset will center around the current price, but efficient market theory also says nothing about how it finds the balance. For example, the fact that puts tend to be more expensive than calls for most underlines implies that the underlying returns have negative skew. Up moves are more frequent, but down moves when they happen are occasionally quite large. What about for option strategies? How do the sizes of typical winners and losers compare? And perhaps more importantly, how much variability do these sizes have? First time we've ever done this study. Let's go to the next slide. It's a cool concept. Using 15 years of option data in the SPY, Apple, and Silver. Weird combination, but sure. We considered the results as a percentage of initial credit from selling strangles and iron condors 45 days before each monthly expiration and closing all trades at 21 DTE. We examined the average, the mean size of winners and losers, average from the worst 5% of losers. And here's something we haven't used before, I don't think, but the average from the best 5% of winners. We call that CEG or conditional expected gain. <laughs> I don't think we, we may call that now CEG, but I don't think we've ever called it CEG before. No, that's what I'm saying. It's first. Or okay, least. you said we call that. You can say we are now calling that CEG. The, the average from the best 5% of winners, which is something we haven't used before. Have you ever experienced it before? Have you experienced CEG? <laughs> Conditional expected gain. <laughs> I like it, though. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's my new thing. Are you an underperformer in CEG? <laughs> I'm. As you get older, you're an underperformer in everything. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. I want to be the best of the worst, okay? <laughs> That's what I want to be. You're well on your way. The upside and downside variability. So anyway, spy strangles. We're starting with spy. Obviously, straddles 50 delta, 30 delta, and 20 delta. We're probably in that 20 to 30 delta range, but let's call it the 20 delta is kind of where our so win percentage of what we do is about 68%. I mean, I'm sorry, it's about 75%. That's over, what is this study, Beth? Was this study 10 years or go back one slide for a second? I didn't catch it, sorry. 15 years. Okay. Going back to 2010. Next slide, please. The average winner. 47% if you manage the 21 days. That's not bad. The average loser, 71%. Now, before you say, huh? Huh? <laughs> you win 75% of the time. So is that a bad situation? I'm not, we're not, we're not suggesting that it's, we're just putting out the numbers. So if you do the 20 delta strangle, you win 75% of the time. Your average winner is plus 47%. Your average loser is 71%. I would think that's pretty good. Okay. I think that's pretty good. The I mean, it is what it is. I don't know. Conditional expected gain. That's your best 5% of the cases. You make 80%. Your worst 5% of the cases, you lose 406. It's five times worse. So the worst is five times worse than the best. But there's your numbers. So again, Would we are you not expected to be five times as bad. This is a naked position. Yes, no, I get it. Would you expect it to be? What would you have said? I mean, I don't know if I would have been able to come up with a number. I'm asking, does I five percent sound like a lot or a little? I don't know. Here for fifteen years, I can't. I I wouldn't know. I, I think it seems. You've reasonable. experienced it. I've experienced I think it seems it. reasonable. Yeah. So, again, the only thing we're pointing out here, because we're not going to try to, like, we're not saying that this is good or bad. We're not making the case for 20 delta strangles. Um, it's just what we trade. So our win percentage, about 75%, which is right where it is. Our average winner at 21 DT is 47%. Um, our average loser is 71%, 25% of the time. But the average winner is 47%, 75% of the time. We have a big winner we can make. 80%. We have a big loser and lose 400%. Okay? 
Let's go to the next slide, Beth. This is going to be iron condors. We go to iron condors at the 20 delta short, 16 delta long, which is probably right around where we are. Their win rate is 62%. Okay? You win 40% of the time, you lose 57% of the time. It's not bad. Okay? But your average, your best winners are 82%, and your best losers are um, 240%. Again, I'm only doing 20 delta here. Just, I don't know, you know, if you did the 50 delta iron condor, which is the which is the short iron fly, your average winner is 9%, your average loser is 10%, and your um, conditional expected gain and your C bar conditional expected, uh, con, con, um, conditional value at risk, they're virtually the same. It's very interesting. Your worst, it is. It is. Your worst. Your 50, here's what it says. What you would expect on some sort of butterfly. Here's what it says, which is really interesting, because it's easier to see here on the Iron Condor. Your 50-50 shot is basically a 50-50 shot, but your edge... Here's <laughs> what it said it is, yeah. Your edge is the four is 54% win rate. It's like having positive drift. What it is. Mm -hmm. It's 54% win rate, but your average winner is 9% and your average loser is 10%. That's the only difference to adjust for the 54%. But your gains are greater than your losses. It seems pretty damn fair. If we go to the next slide, again, this is just a continuation in Apple. It's not much, Apple's not going to be much different. But if we go to the 20 Delta Strangles in Apple, which is where we live, it's a 66% win rate. It's 51 to 1%. Uh, 119, and, and your CEG is 88 versus your CVAR of 456. It's almost the same as strangles. And if you go to the next slide, which is iron condors in Apple, you're going to see virtually the same thing as we just saw in the spy. Go next up here. 63, 57, 106, and then 97 and 370. They're, it's almost identical. Um, and here on the 50 Delta, Iron Condor, right at the at the money iron fly, 52% chance of success. And your average winner is a little smaller than your average loser. It's not quite as good as spy. And it's just good. It's just good. It's good research. It's just interesting to show you kind of how efficient these markets are. They've one, got one knock yet in socks off versus the other. Yeah, well, well, I like the strangles. Go to the next one. Go to the next slide so you can see the strangles and the silver. Because I like the strangles because they get the best. Um, there's uh, there is the best contrast here. So the win percentage at 70% on the 20 delta strangle, your average winner is 51%, your average loser is 127%, and then you're 81 to 466. It doesn't, there's a couple of really important takeaways. One, it doesn't matter what product you trade. They're all the same. It does, well, they're all kind of the same. The higher implied volatility will give you the best edge. Sure. It doesn't matter what strategy you choose. As long as you are consistent with your mechanics, the numbers are going to play out. It's not huge, but the numbers are going to play out. And whether it's silver, um, whether it's QQQ, whether it's SPY, it didn't matter. Okay, the numbers all play out to virtually the same thing for 15 years. And with a small amount of edge, you know, the rest you got to do yourself. you got to work your magic. I think the high applied volatility is the whole key to this. Agreed. Which we always think, right? Um, IV rank. Yep. I think it's the whole key. Mm -hmm. Let's go to takeaways, Beth. Next slide. So despite their long-term profitability, the returns from premium selling showed downside skew regardless of the underlying. I think Tony and I would both say this is not golf. There is downside skew in trading. When, when it comes to the outlier losses are greater than the outlier wins. In golf, as we've shown, the outlier wins are greater than the outlier losses. In particular, and you'd say the same thing for baseball. I'd rather hit a home run. I don't care if I strike out three times. In particular, no, I, can contest to that. I can attest to that. You certainly did not care. You struck out three times. You never so struck out a home run life. at one point. Even if we needed base runners, you didn't care. We could be down by 50. Didn't matter. You were swinging for the fences, even if you were the first man up. Didn't matter. Totally agree. But I didn't strike out. In particular, popped out. While average losers were mostly somewhat larger than average winners, the C bar was greatly was generally several times as large as the CEG. 
a conditional expected gain. The effect was larger for further out of the money options, higher probability of profit trades, agreed. And defined risk trades have less downside exposure, but also taken less credits. On a pure credit basis, their loss profile was still less risky than strangles, but they had but they didn't make as much as you expected. Selling options means taking risk, but by examining the past results, we can hopefully get into some new trades with our eyes wide open um, to both profitable to probable downsides and likely rewards. It's actually a really good piece just showing you kind of the risk reward and how efficient the markets are.